In this lesson, we're going to look at angles formed by parallel lines. Now, this first investigation using a compass and a protractor, we're going to go into in class, we're going to go through that. But if you look at the next page here, let's take a look at when a transversal intersects two parallel lines. Now, we've already looked with our GeoGebra lesson, we've already looked that we've got four pairs of angles here, but let's give them some new names. Now, corresponding angles are equal. When we're looking at corresponding angles, we've already looked at that term, what a corresponding angle is. Those angles here would be angle A corresponding with angle E. Okay, so those are corresponding with one another. Angle B corresponds with angle F. Angle D corresponds with angle H. And finally, angle C corresponds with angle G. So looking at those four pairs of angles. Alternate in interior angles are different. Now, first of all, when we're talking about interior angles, we're talking about the angles on the inside of these parallel lines. So anything on the inside, that means anything on the outside doesn't count to us. Now the fact that they're alternate interior means they're on opposite sides of the transversal. So for example, angle C is an alternate interior angle for angle F, which means those angles are equal. And then the same reason, angle E and angle D. So those are our alternate interior angles on the inside of the transversals. Now, for alternate exterior angles, same idea, but we're looking on the outside of those parallel lines. So we're looking at these four angles instead. And alternate meaning on opposite sides of the transversal. So angle A is an alternate exterior angle to angle H, and they're equal. And then angle B is an alternate exterior angle to angle G. Finally, we're talking about interior angles on the same side of the transversal. So when I'm looking at the transversal here in yellow, when we're looking at our interior angles, we're looking at the ones on the inside, but same side of the transversal, not opposite. So C and E, same side of the transversal, they add up to 180 degrees. D and F, same side of the transversal, they add up to 180 degrees. So let's write that down here. So angle C plus angle E is 180 degrees. Angle D plus angle F add up to 180 degrees. Interior angles on the same side of the transversal are supplementary. All right, let's take a look at example one. We use all these properties to solve some unknown angles. Determine the measures of A, B, C, and D. Now you can do them in that order, but you don't have to. Depending on the properties you're looking at will determine what angles you're also looking at. So if I look at angle A, angle A is sitting in the same spot as the 110 degrees, but on the other parallel line. Remember, these indicate that those two lines are parallel to one another. So those would be considered corresponding angles. So angle A is 110 degrees for that reason. So it's good to know what the angle is, but we also need to give an explanation as to why. My explanation here, the 110 angle and the angle A are corresponding angles, and they would only be equal if those two lines are parallel, which they are. Taking a look at angle B, I can see that angle B and angle A are vertically opposite. Okay, they're directly across from one another. So because they're vertically opposite angles, I could say that they're equal. The other property you might want to use, doesn't matter which one, is that the 110 degree angle and angle B are alternate exterior angles. Either one of those explanations would justify that angle B is also equal to 110 degrees. Let's label our angle A and our angle B so we can keep track of what we've solved for. 
This is 110 degrees. This is 110 degrees. Now let's look at angle C. Angle C and angle A are both angles that are on the same side of the transversal, but they're also interior angles on the inside of these two parallel lines. So those two angles, angle A and angle C, are going to be supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. Let's write that. So angle A plus angle C are equal to 180 degrees. So if I solve for that, I've got 110 degrees for angle A. I don't know what angle C is, but I know that they equal to 180 degrees. So doing some algebra here, I get 180 degrees minus 110 degrees, giving me angle C being equal to 70 degrees. Now we've got a lot going on here, so let's circle our answers or box our answers so they stand out for us here. And let's write out our explanation. Angle A and angle C are interior angles on the same side of the transversal, meaning that angle A and angle C are supplementary, which we can use to figure out what angle C is. In this case, it was 70 degrees. So let's add that to our diagram. Finally, we have D. And angle D and angle C are alternate interior angles, making them equal as well. Angle C is equal to angle D, giving us that angle D will also be 70 degrees. And we'll write our explanation because angle C and angle D are alternate interior angles. Okay, so that's it for example one. But our following examples, the ones that uh, we're going to look at after this, they're all going to be along the same lines of this. So if you want to use this as your foundation to try the other ones on your own, and then come back and check to see if you did them the same. That's a wonderful way for you to learn, or you can go along with me, whatever you choose. Let's take a look at example two. So here it says determine the measure of all unknown angles. So not just the ones that are labeled A, B, C, D, E, F, but all the ones in between as well. So in this question, I'm gonna start with this angle A, B, F, which is right in here. And I can see that angle A, B, F is going to be supplementary with 105 degrees because both of those angles are sitting along the same straight line. So angle A, B, F is going to be 180 degrees minus 105 degrees to give us an answer of 75 degrees because they are supplementary angles. Angle CBD, which is sitting right here, angle CBD, which is in here, I can see that that's going to be a vertically opposite angle to angle ABF, and those two are going to be equal angles. All right, now I'm gonna just put those values in. So this is 75 degrees, this is 75 degrees. Now I'm looking for the next thing I can figure out. So what about, let's take a look at angle F, B, E. F, B, E, that's the angle in here. Now how am I gonna figure that one out? Well, I can see that that is going to be an alternate interior angle to this 36 degrees here. Those two are alternate interior, making them equal, so then this is also going to be 36 degrees. The next angle I'm looking at here is angle FEB, which would be the angle sitting FEB right here. And if I just eliminate some of the noise here, get rid of the other stuff around it, I can see that I've got a triangle here we know that all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So knowing that one is 36, the other 75, 
I can for sure figure out that third angle by subtracting them off of 180. So angle FEB would be equal to 180 degrees minus the 36 degrees. Subtract off the 75 degrees to give us an answer of 69 degrees. Okay, so that's in here. And the reason for that, all angles in a triangle add up to 180. At this point, we only have two angles left. Let's take a look at angle DBE, and that would be the angle up in here. Okay, now for here, I can see that it's equal to angle FEB because they are alternate interior angles, and they would both be 69 degrees. So I'm looking at this one here. So angle D, B, E is equal to angle F, E, B, which is the same 69 degrees because they are alternate interior angles. And finally, angle B, D, E down here, we can use the triangle property again that all angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, giving us 75 degrees here because angle B, D, E is equal to 180 degrees minus 69 degrees minus 36 degrees to give us that 75 degree angle. And that's it for that part A of example two. Now recognize it's one thing to watch me go through and understand where that's coming from and another thing to do it on your own because it's easy to get lost within the triangle or within parallel lines or figuring out where your transversal is um, as compared to when you watch me go through it. So it's a really good idea to try some examples of on your own. Now B is asking is BD parallel to EF? Well they only told us that BF was parallel to DE because of those markings but I would say yes. How do I know that? Well because angle FEE and angle FBD are equal to one another because they're alternate interior angles and because those are equal to one another we can draw that conclusion. Angle FEB is this whole angle FEB all of this put together. So that would be 69 degrees plus 36 degrees. Now when we look at angle FBD that's this whole angle and that is again 69 degrees plus 36 degrees. Well if there's our transversal right we can see then we can see that for sure those two lines are going to be parallel and that's because our alternate interior angles are equal to one another. Let's take a look at example three. For example 3, all they're saying is solve for x. Well, I can see the x is sitting there, but what do I have for information? Well, I can see I've got a transversal and two parallel lines, but if you look further, you can see that these are corresponding angles, and we know that corresponding angles are equal. Well, then that means that 75 degrees is equal to 11x minus 2. And once you set up that equation, you can just use algebra and solve. Add 2 to both sides. That gives us 77 is equal to 11x. Getting x by itself, divide both sides by 11. And you get that x is equal to 7. Thanks for joining me today.